Hello, my friends. Oh, autumn is starting to really come into its own here. The colors are just beautiful. And we're getting to start to see through the hills a little bit more so that we can see more of the cliffs and some of the caves and other places that might make for some good winter exploring. I wanted to share today about breathing because this is a time for many of us when we're feeling a little extra stress. Now, our world is pretty good at helping us to feel stress. It's been like this for a long time. We think of civilization as something that should be less stressful than living in the wilderness, let's say. But when we're in the woods, we tend to be more present moment. And our culture trains us into always thinking about the what ifs. That gets us into a constant state of stress, chronic, low grade, for some of us, high grade stress. We know that this is not good for our system in general. It's certainly not good for our sense of well being, and it erodes our health on many levels. Now, there is a fairly simple trick, if you will, or basic practice that can really help to mitigate the negative effects of that cultural tendency towards constant stress. I honestly, my friends, I do not even go onto most areas of YouTube or the internet these days because there are so many people making their predictions about the next bad thing that will happen. And the more we intake those, I'm going to call them fictions because they're not current realities. They're people's projections. And as I've shared in one video maybe a year or two ago, most people are pretty lousy Nostradamuses. They are not good at making predictions. If somebody really was good at that, then we probably would have a different kind of culture. But this juggernaut runs on without any of us really being in control or really understanding it. Now, as it moves, we have this choice. We can look ahead. We can project in our minds and think, oh my gosh, what if this, what if that? Think what that does to us. We can also be present with the situation as it's unfolding. It's not that we can't look ahead and maybe weigh a few options, be sensibly prepared, but it's one thing to be rationally prepared for something and another thing to put ourselves into that emotional tailspin that comes with thinking and overthinking about the possibilities. I'm saying all this because for most of us, there's enough media coming in, enough of that input, that despite our best intentions or our efforts at mindfulness, we are going to get sucked in at some level to that worry and that stress. The key here, the little secret trick, that basic practice, is just to breathe deep again. We know from ancient wisdom masters all the way up to research at Harvard that a deep breath, it counters that fight or flight response. In other words, it de-stresses us. That stress is busy sending out all kinds of chemicals into our body and raising our blood pressure and reducing our ability to think rationally, deep breath does the opposite. Now, it is not necessarily a panacea. It's not going to make everything better, but it counters that massive amount of intake of stressors that many of us are experiencing right now. So if we can have this as an ally, as a friend, then we can come back again and again to this breath and it will work some pretty good magic in our lives. A deep breath can feel uncomfortable for some people. We just aren't used to using the musculature that is involved with filling up our diaphragm, 
with stretching it out, with filling our lungs. And so we get very used to what I call a high rapid breath. You might catch yourself in this throughout the day. Just kind of breathing high. So when I say high, it feels the sensation is as if the air is coming from up here. And it tends to be more rapid and shallow. So I'm just breathing like this. I might even find myself holding my breath during moments of tension, and gasping. <laughs> now, to breathe deep, we're going to try to breathe into our belly. And the sensation is of filling up our diaphragm, the muscle that down here is going to pull and enable our lungs to stretch and fill. But it's going to feel, again, as if we are filling up our belly with air. And to do it, I'm just going to breathe in and let my belly distend out. So, so going from the side, I'm going to let that belly distend out. It doesn't feel right to our Western culture, which is tight six-pack abs and that V figure. So that's, you know, and I'm guilty of that too with martial arts. I'm often keeping this really, really tight so I can take hits in the stomach and abdomen. But we also want to exercise those muscles so they're capable, at least at some level, of extending out to allow that spaciousness for the belly breathing. When I breathe into that belly, the easiest way often to do this for people is to choose a count. Five seconds works for me. I breathe in for five seconds, filling up that belly, breathe out for five seconds. For you, it might be six or seven, it might be four or three or even two. The number right now doesn't matter. It will probably slowly get larger the more you practice this. But when you begin, choose a number that works for you, that's comfortable. Don't make this uncomfortable. And breathe in, feel it filling you up. Exhale through that belly. You can do this throughout the day. And a great way is, for instance, if you have a device that you can set a random chime on, use that. You can use something like Insight Timer, which is a meditation timer on a, on a phone. And you can set it to regular intervals. You can also use some kind of, I'm going to call it a, a natural instance in your environment walking through a doorway, whenever you walk through a doorway, whenever you see a red car, whenever you hear a chickadee, choose something for yourself that's going to be your touchstone or that alarm. When that happens, stop and take a breath. If you do this two or three times during the day, it's going to be of benefit to you. If you do it 50 times during the day, it's going to be of great benefit to you. And here's another thing, the more we do it, the more it can start to become habitual. Eventually, we breathe naturally through our belly. We breathe naturally long inhalations and exhalations. And we start to feel, in general, a heightened state of calm in our lives, or greater sense of calm. If this just feels too uncomfortable, and I've heard from some people that it does feel uncomfortable. Then you can lay down in your bed and you can practice filling up your full breath. To do that, lay on your back, put your hands on your belly, and then breathe in through your belly and feel it fill up with air. I'm going to use some numbers. I'm going to say 50, 40, 10. And what I mean by that is that you're going to fill up with air in your belly and it's going to feel as if you're full, but you've really only taken about 50% of your breath. Then fill up your lungs and oddly you will find that even though you have filled your belly, you'll probably find that you can fill up your lungs almost as much as you could fill up your belly. That's the 40. When that feels full, 
you're at 90 now, there's 10% left. And that feels like filling up almost your throat. Take that last little breath that fills you up and then exhale it all. Let it all just fall away and relax. So belly, that's 50%. The next 40 will bring you to 90% and then 10. Now, not everybody's going to have that same ratio or that same feeling of sensations, but if you use this as a general guide, you're going to find that you can probably fill up almost different containers inside of your body. And what you're really doing is you're exercising different musculature. You're getting muscles to be able to open you. You're getting things to stretch. You're really allowing all the physical processes that are necessary to take a full breath to operate. And if you practice that a little bit on your back, it's good even if you can take a good breath to practice this three section breathing a little bit. The more you do that, the more you're going to find that you can take a full deep inhale and release that exhale. The forest monks in general would find that just time in the woods would relax their breathing. They naturally would come into this deep breathing. It wouldn't be something they would have to practice because it's probably our natural way of breathing when we are feeling in the present moment. Our culture, that takes us on a totally different ride. And here, when we're living amidst news programs and all the human world, that's when we need to start to integrate some of these practices that can bring us a little bit closer to our natural state of being. Just the power of a breath, my friends. It's amazing. Over time, this will do some great good and relax your body, your mind, your emotions down to a more... Well, a level that's going to feel more like well-being rather than survival. Share in the comments if you deep breathe, if you notice you're breathing high and shallow throughout the day, if you're able to catch yourself, and if you develop a good practice that might be of benefit to others to encourage them to deep breathe, let us know in the comments. All right, my friends. Love to you all, and we will talk with you in the comments.